Namaste fam, Wolfgore here, and thank you for clicking on the video. So, today we are going to be working on a soundboard slash backdrop for my live stream. And you're going to be seeing this a lot, so I thought, why not challenge myself, try and make a DIY video and show you guys what went into building this and how you can do it yourself if you're interested. So first things first, why don't we go over the tools and the materials that we're going to be using today. Now, I have been scouring the internet for something that I could use as a backdrop. And what I ended up deciding on going with was a 72 by 72 dorm room separator made out of cardboard. It costs $30 on Amazon. Links to all of this stuff down below that I bought on Amazon. And, uh, you know, I had a feeling that there was going to be this problem with it. And once I got it, there is, in fact, a big old crease in the middle because it's cardboard and it was not shipped with delicate hands. So knowing that that was likely going to be the case, I decided to reinforce this with wood. So I went to Home Depot and I got some one by two boards. Let me show you. We have three eight foot long one by two boards. One by two is very thin, two inches wide. They're not very expensive. I got six different boards total for about $25. It's going to vary depending on where you live. And I got three of these one by one boards. These are going to be for the top of it. They're a little bit lighter. So I want the majority of the weight to be on the bottom for stability's sake. But same thing, eight feet long, one by, very thin, one inch. Now to secure the wood and the cardboard together, what we are going to do is use these square drive, half inch long wood screws that I got for free at work. They're pretty cheap. You can get them at any hardware store or something similar. Any, any wood screw will do for this as long as it's short and it isn't going to punch through the one inch thick wood, which is actually less than one inch thick. Fun fact, it's more like three quarter. And then we also have Gorilla Wood Glue. Now, I don't know how well this is actually going to stick to the cardboard, but that's why we have two different mediums for bonding them together. On the face of the cardboard, we are going to have a six by four grid of these purple and black sound foam squares that I got on Amazon, links down below. They're a little bit on the pricey side, but I think they're going to look fantastic. And to secure those to the cardboard, we are going to be using this double-sided adhesive Velcro tape. I got two rolls of this stuff. I believe it's a total of 10 feet. If we chop those into one inch squares, that should give me 120 squares. And we have, we should only need about 100 squares of this stuff. 96 actually, if my math is correct. And I have used this stuff on this same type of sound foam before. It will stick to the back and it will stick to drywall. I'm assuming it will stick to cardboard. Okay, if it doesn't, I'll be sure to let you know how we adjusted for that. As for the tools, we have a screw gun with a number two square drive bit for driving in the screws. We have a basic handsaw for cutting our wood to length and of course a framing square to get nice neat lines for our cuts. Of course a tape measurer to get our wood to length, that's what he said. And if we end up using any other tools, I'll be sure to let you know in case you are wanting to do this yourself at home. All right, what is next? We are going to lay out our materials, start to do some measurements and get ready to start making some cuts on the wood. This center crease here, I want that facing up and the sound foam on either side of that so I can fold this in half when I'm finished and the sound foam will split open as opposed to closing on itself. Which means we need to flip this over so we can secure the wood to the back side. This is the rough layout of how we are going to secure the wood in the centers right there and right there. We're gonna to have to make cuts so that it will pivot and the scraps that you see on the edges over here may be used to reinforce the center a bit more. But let's start putting on some lines with our framing square so we can make some cuts. Full disclosure, I used these stake ons to remove the staples holding the price tags on the wood. I'm an electrician, so I don't expect most people to have these lying around. You will also need a pencil or a pen to make the lines on your wood.
as you can see, a handsaw does the trick just fine. I wish I would have brought my skill saw home from work, but a handsaw will do the trick. It's only one buy after all. On this first cut right here, I forgot to account for the three and a half inches right here that that board is going to be right here. So we need to take off three and a half additional inches over here and we'll be sure to do that on the first cut over here. Ever heard the expression, measure twice, cut once? Well, this is why. This was supposed to be three and a half inches and somehow I ended up with about four and a half. Not sure what I did, but uh, it certainly means that I have to make a quick trip to Home Depot. But we're gonna get the rest of the cuts done first in case I mess up again somehow. That way I'll be able to pick up all the wood that I need to finish my project. For the record, it's June right now, and it's one of the hotter weekends of June, and I'm really glad that I'm getting to do this in the shade. But that cut got messed up by about one inch because I'm a big old dummy and I didn't measure twice and cut once, so we're gonna run back to Home Depot and get a new piece of wood to replace the one we fucked up. BRB fam. And through the magic of editing, we are back from Home Depot. We have replaced our piece of lumber that we messed up with a new one. In addition, I was worried that I might not have enough screws because we actually have a lot of boards on the project and I want to get a good number of screws into each board because I really want this to be a quality piece of work and I want it to last. So we picked up a pack of 100 wood screws and 50 washers. Now what these washers are going to do is they're going to distribute the pressure wider in a wider circle around the screw on the cardboard. And because it's cardboard, I know eventually the screws are gonna wanna tear through the cardboard. So by adding these washers, we are going to increase the life of our project. All right, fam, the layout for our wood is almost done, but here and here, we need to take out about two inches of material so that it will pivot in the middle away from the sound foam. We don't want the sound foam closing on itself because that is going to make it flatten over time and look funny in the back of our shot. So let's do that.
All right, we've got our lines on at each pivot point. I decided to go with a three inch gap and we're gonna try and do it at an angle so that it, when it folds together, the two square corners aren't gonna meet. It's gonna be at an angle so it'll sit together more comfortably. That's the plan. It might not matter with the size of the gap that we're doing, but I just wanna make it as best that I can. I don't know how well that came across in the video, but that is why you always want to avoid cutting on knots. I took about three times as long and way more energy, but when that's where the cut has to be, that's where the cut has to be. Okay, we are finished cutting the wood. Fantastic, we have our layout done. We might be cutting a little more if we decide to use some of these scrap pieces in the center over here, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. It's important to keep your caloric intake high because if you get grumpy, you get sloppy. And if you get sloppy, you're gonna mess up your whole project. Yeah, that's right. I eat cheese sticks like this. Come at me, bro. All right, during snack break, I've been thinking about it, and we are going to add some of these one by two blocks, scrap pieces that we have to these centers right about there and up there. Uh, just to add a little bit of reinforcement, I figured it's best to do it now while we have the layout still available to us, as opposed to later. Wait, that's an extra tool. I used my electrician's knife to deburr the edge of the wood. Full disclosure. Oh, okay, we're about two hours into the project and we have finally got our wood layout done. You can see my center reinforcements here. I think they're really gonna help with the structural integrity of the project. Morgana, Morgana, what are you getting excited about? You not like it when I talk to myself? Does that weird you out? <laughs> 